Hey guys, check this out. This is the Robox Pro. It has just arrived. It's big. Like, I mean, obviously I don't know how much of the box is the printer. I presume it's got a lot of padding, but um, I need a banana for scale. <laughs> Let me find something. There you are. That can should give you some sense of scale, how big this box is. I'm now gonna open it up so we can have a look at how things come on the inside. Here we have, this is the top view of the printer in the box. It does fill up most of the box, it would seem. Here we have the printer just out of the top box part. It would appear that actually the box is designed so that once you cut the straps, the box top slots off, which makes more sense because we just had to cut the bit around off because we weren't really sure how to get the printer out without damaging it. So uh, for anyone actually unboxing one in the future, yeah. <laughs> So the box it came in has quite a lot of under padding because that's where it stores the three heads and the other accessories. We've also got some keys. Um, oh yeah, you can actually lock the printer shut. <laughs> so yeah, and then on the back we have the two extruders which actually look like the same ones that are inside the uh, original Robox, the smaller one. So uh, that's interesting. It would be good to see how much parts are shared. So here we have the printer out of its boxing and on the desk where it will sit. See how big it is compared with the original printer. It's humongous. <laughs> so in the box, this is what you get in addition to the printer. You get keys to unlock it, an ethernet cable for connecting it to the network. I'm not sure if it's Wi-Fi, I can't remember a power cord and then the three print heads so we've got the dual material the quick fill and they haven't got a sticker for it i guess but this is the ruby olsen head the um, ruby nozzle print head here we are the grand unlocking of the printer it's not even a cheap key it's a really nice fancy key Quah. look at that fancy <laughs> Wow, interesting. And one thing I noticed, which is quite interesting, is on the side they're using the uh, dual material adapter that the original Robox has, just with a different branding on it. And it's also locked into place, you can't actually pull it off. Here we are removing the uh, fixing plastic. Now, one thing that's noticeable is the bed doesn't seem to be removable. Um, I will point out, I haven't done a ton of backgrounds research, but that looks like one of their special print surfaces. Unfortunately, the one for my printer got damaged. <laughs> no names named. <laughs> but yeah, this, this print head, um, actually it does look like it's removable. What am I saying? Yeah. It's just, you have to flex it to remove it. That's a very interesting, um, but cool. So uh, yeah, there we are. We will now uh, attempt putting a head on it. Here we have the box for the Ruby Olsen head. So with all the print heads, they come with this fancy little material bag and some wipes for the print bed. And um, my colleague will take the head out as I can't do it with one hand. And there we are, the lovely see-through ruby head. And you can see that pink nozzle. That is the Ruby Olsen head, fancy. Um, we'll now put it in the printer. Here we go, here we go. Wrong way. Yeah. yeah, it's the way. Yeah, keep going. Yep, yeah, there we are. So th that's the nice thing about the Robox print heads; are very easy to remove and insert. So there we are. That is the uh, initial setup of the Robox. We've now got to power it on, plug it in, stuff like that. So now about to turn the printer on. I'm just gonna flip the switch and we'll see what happens. Oh, so we have internal lighting, um, much more significant than the previous printer's internal lighting. And the screen is also lit up, but it's not actually displaying anything at the moment. Um, there we are, CEL. So this printer does seem to have a bit of a boot time, um, which is something to keep in mind if you're in a hurry. It's probably not gonna be significant, but uh, we're probably at the maybe 10 second mark. Oh, you see the little mouse? Little pointer icon. 
So this is probably running a um, Android or Linux uh, flavor on it. That's really interesting to see an actual mass pointer. It's a uh, resistive touchscreen by the feel of it, not a capacitive, but it's not really a big deal. Yeah, because I can do it with my na nail. You see the printer changing color. So, yeah, RGB like the previous one. And there we are. We have uh, boot up. So that probably took about 30 seconds. So don't go turning the printer off if you need to turn it on very quickly. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So we're going to try printing a squidgy model. And we'll see how that goes.